Good day everyone, welcome to my channel. So we have our new topic in disaster readiness and rest reduction or DRRR which is all about factors underlying disasters. So this will be the topic for quarter 3, module number 1 and lesson number 3. Okay, for the objectives, uh, differentiate the rest factors underlying disasters. Hello students, this module is all about the basic factors of disaster and disaster rest. After studying and working on all activities on this module, you will be able to determine the underlying factors that directly influence the disaster. The common reactions seen or felt after any type of disaster is stress reaction. This could be the effect of a very traumatic experience during the event of disaster. Disasters can cause a full range of mental and physical reactions. You may also react to problems that occur after the event as well as the triggers or reminders of the trauma. Now, what are the rest factors underlying disasters? The first one is severity of exposure. Rest of future mental problems is highly related to the amount of exposure to the disaster. Those that go through the disaster themselves are in at the highest rest. At the next level are those in the close contact with victims while those who only had indirect exposure such as news of the severe damage are at the lower rest of lasting impact. Death, life threat, injury, and loss of possessions are the factors that lead most often to mental health problems. Accordingly, the survivors or the victims having suffered from distress or mental health problems that need clinical care. The next factor that underlying the disaster is the gender and the family. According to the study, women or girls mostly suffer more negative effects than do men or boys. When the children are in the home, disaster recovery is more stressful. Women with spouses also experience more distress during recovery than those who are single. Having a family member in the home who is extremely distressed is related to more stress for everyone. After a disaster, marital stress has been found to increase. Conflicts between family members or lack of support within the family make it harder to recover from the disasters. Another factor that underlying disaster is the age. Adults who are in the range of 40 to 60 are likely to be more distressed after disasters because if you are in the age range, you have more demands from job and family. Research on how children react to the natural disasters is limited. In general, more severe distress after disasters is seen in the children than adults. The worst recovery in children is related to higher stress in the parents. Other factors underlying disaster is other factors specific to the survivor. There are several factors related to the survivor's background and resources which are important for recovery from disaster. 
Recovery is worse if the survivors are First, if the survivor is not prepared before the disaster The second one is first time to experience a disaster or no experience at all in dealing with disasters the third one is after the disaster, they are dealing with other stressor. The fourth one is have a low or poor self-esteem. The fifth one is think that nobody cares for them or feeling left alone. The sixth one is to think that they have a little control over what happens to them. And the last one is the less capacity to manage the stress by themselves. Other factors have also been found to predict worse outcomes. First is prevalent or the death of someone close, panic, horror, or feelings like that during the disaster, broken family or being separated from family, especially among youth, and being forced to leave home or displaced. Another factor underlying disaster is the developing countries. If the disaster occurs in developing countries, rest factors can be made worse. People living in these countries have more severe mental health impact than those who are living in the developed countries. This is true even with less disasters happened. Another factor underlying disaster is low or negative social support. This help and support extended by others can be both a rest and a resilience factor. After a disaster, social support may become weak. It may be due to the need for members of the support network to get on their own lives or due to stress. Sometimes, other responses for support are negative. For example, even though you are a survivor and yet someone may play down your problems, needs, or pain, or expect you to recover more quickly than is realistic, this situation would result to a long-term distress and traumatize survivor. Another factor of underlying disaster is the communicable diseases associated with natural disasters. Natural disaster is usually followed by several communicable diseases and most of the affected individuals are those who are displaced. The rest for communicable disease transmission after disasters is associated primarily with the size and characteristics of the displaced population, specifically the proximity of water and functioning latrines, the nutritional status of the displaced population, the level of immunity to vaccine-preventable diseases such as measles, and the access to healthcare services. Water-related communicable diseases. The first one is diarrhea. It is an outbreak of diarrheal diseases. Can occur after drinking water that has been contaminated with flood water. Flooding is identified as a significant risk factor for diarrheal illnesses. The risk for diarrheal disease is higher in developing countries than in industrialized countries. Another water-related communicable diseases is hepatitis A and E. Accordingly, hepatitis A and E are also transmitted by the fecal-oral route in association with lack of access to safe water and sanitation. Hepatitis A is endemic in most developing countries and most children are exposed and develop immunity at an early age. 
As a result, the rest for large outbreaks in usually low in these settings. In hepatitis, endemic areas, outbreaks frequently follow heavy rains and floods. The illness is generally mild and self-limited, but in pregnant women, case fatality rates can reach 25%, and that is according from the article of Emerging Infectious Diseases in 2007. Another water-related communicable diseases is the leptospirosis. Leptospirosis is an epidemic-prone zoonotic bacterial disease that can be transmitted by direct contact with contaminated water. Rodents or mice shed large amount of leptospires in their urine and transmission occurs through contact of the skin and mucous membranes with water, damp soil or vegetation such as, such as sugar cane or mud contaminated with rodent urine. Another diseases in crowding is measles. According to an article on emerging infectious diseases in 2007, measles and the rest for transmission after a natural disaster are dependent on baseline immunization coverage among the affected population and in a particular among children below 15 years of age. Living in a very crowded area facilitates the transmission of measles and necessitate even higher immunization coverage levels to have outbreaks prevention. Just like during the Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991 where there were 18,000 cases involved in having measles and these people were those who were displaced and overcrowding in a particular evacuation center.